we're doing this recording, and this is going to be the product RCX map review. Um, basically, I'm not going to go over callouts. I'll mention some names, but on the callouts, we have the diagrams here, two diagrams. Uh, so please, by all means, review those and get familiar with the callouts there, uh, and you can relate them to this video. So as a start, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to cover uh, Vaccinator, we're going to cover Ubers, and we're going to cover crits. And a lot of this stuff will be common, depending what type of Medigun that we're using. And uh, so I'll go over the common stuff, which applies to all three types, and I'll go into the different details of each Uber gun, basically. So on the rollout, everybody crouch for the demo, of course. Um, and then the demo will get ahead of the gang there, except for Vaccinator. And uh, uh, we'll have a little bit of a demo fight, and Scout be ready to, to get in there and go for a pick if you can, um, and try to get there as quick as you can ahead of the group. Soldier, go ahead and whip uh, everybody, so you'll be one equipped with the, the whip. And uh, uh, you don't need to direct it in this map normally, just because they're most likely to be building minis. Should they go with the level three when you die, then come up with direct hit and to combat it. Uh, and usually you have a pretty good light sign of their, their sentry, so if they do have a level three, you should be able to take it down with direct hit and just find that good angle on it. So. Uh, this, uh, aside from the sniper and the spy who work independently in this map, this is a pretty good, good uh, spy map too. We're going to come out through this way, through the main, as we call it, and everybody's going to roll out this way. This is the fastest way there. The demo should already be here. The medic will come up, arrow the demo, which will probably be crouched back here reloading after his spam fest with the other demo, and then he can go right back to, to uh, healing everybody. Uh, as appropriate. Then eventually we want to rotate and hang out in the pocket mostly. Don't know if we want to be there every single time, then we're predictable, but uh, and we'll have our Hulk combo over here. On the flank, uh, our, and our rollout, then we should have our soldier and our scout working the flank over here. So that's a cement. Usually you don't want to get too far past here. If you, if you peek, the soldier can be up there, scout, and he can kill you. Um, so you guys kind of work this. If we get a couple of them, then you guys can get and play more of a forward, forward flank hold uh, kind of thing. Um, if this, either of you go down on flank, be sure to call our flank. I'm sorry, if both of you go down, whoever dies last, say our flank is down, our flank is down. If we can, on combo, we will try to help and spam, uh, et cetera, do what we need to do. Uh, NG, you are going to, at first, the number one thing is to build up a teleporter a house here. Um, wherever you think, you know, you probably want to change it around a little bit um, so you're not predictable. Um, maybe find a place that you can hide it a little bit. The spy is not going to access it too much. But getting that level three up is number one. That way we can roll through real fast. Um, Pyro, you may want to consider running home wrecker in this one. Um, just that way you can help the NG keep the tele and dispenser up. So first, NG, you put up the telly, level three. You get that working fine, and then you build a dispenser. Usually, you want to build it right about here. So our pocket uh, combo area here, we can all get our heels from it. If you get time, you might keep hitting it to try to take it to level three. Um, but that being said, once you get the dispenser up, then you can come over here, and you can work flank with our scout and our soldier, putting minis up. They will go down just a deterrent. Uh, and see minis all over the place here. Sometimes a wrangled up there. Um, wherever you think, if for forward holding, you could put a mini up here, etc. Um, and uh, then you're going to be a fighting class along with your mini helping to flank out and calling. So uh, basically, if we get a lot of people, or we kill a lot uh, and are down, then a forward hold, and this goes for all three different mini guns, will be this log right here. This is our line in the sand. Our combo can will move up to here. We'll treat this as the new pocket. Um, and uh, also, by the way, this uh, pack here at dog bed or caution, um, if you see disappear, spy. And that's that's a good clue. Just keep your that in your peripheral vision. I'll send it disappears and then call out the spy there. Um, but anyway, going back to the forward hold, so this log is our line in the sand. So our combo should be around here. And our flank should be kind of right across, right around here. And that's what we're going to do. The demo and soldier and scout, what we can do is we can go for a one-time pick. Like his demo, I might come here. 
put a trap down there, go pick one off. Once I kill one, I'm getting out of dodge. One mistake I've made is waiting too long, and then two or three more come, and then you're dead. So what I'll do is go for a kill, get my sticky down, and get out. And the soldier, you could do the same thing. You can try to kill one, and then get out. Um, but there's only a few classes you should ever consider being this far forward, up on the cliff or over there. Um, also, there's a rock, the cliff rock right here. You could work up on there, spam the cliff, and then get back and get out of dodge. Now, the, you need to spy check along with the pyro. Pyro, you should be doing a lot of little puffs. The spy loves to come down from the cliff and jump on you. This is a good spy hiding spot here. You'll see them in the corners a lot. Spy, so as you're going by, if you're a scout or, or a soldier, you can take a shot there, a pyro, you know, put a little flame around there, see if you can light them up. Um, and then heavy, just keep shooting behind us, watch that spy. Um, and then uh, same thing with the cliff, he'll jump down, and so you can take pot shots up there. Okay, uh, so that is the rollout. Um, yeah, we need to be very, very conscious. This is a war of medics, basically, this whole map. So it's who's medic goes down, and then the other one has a big advantage. And then they play off Uber advantages, or crits advantages, or vaccinator advantages, etc. cetera. So uh, Spy, it's always good to get med picks wherever you can. Sometimes the pyro's right all over him, so you can't always do that. Um, you can see which classes we're supposed to focus into the, uh, if you look at the, the notes in our channel. So be very cognizant of which classes and who we need to, to focus on the team that we're playing this week on this map. Okay, so uh, that being said, uh, let's see, the Sully, we talked about the whip. So you'll be here. We may need you to jump in and go for a force. Uh, they will most likely be running Uber. It could be running crits, not likely. They're going to run vaccinator. Um, and so if their med's back here or their med's over here, um, make sure you get a nice buff and then, and then say, okay, I'm going to be jumping in three, two, one. And before you jump, make sure most of our players are up because as soon as you jump, what we'll do is we'll come in and try to get picks. And I can come in this demo and put a lot of spam if he's back in the pocket there. The hardest part is working when you're back behind the house. And if the team's playing very conservative, they're getting beat up a little bit, a lot of times their medic will be way back here. He needs, he's really tough to get to. Um, but in the pocket, not so much. Or This is kind of a death zone, so we really don't want to have our combo behind the rock very much. A uh, good place to die. So, But if they're there, um, anyway, just be aware. Also, we need good calls on what our combo is in the med. Sniper, too, is very important. You know, he might be up in China. He might be in the cliff. He might be working from their pack. You might be working down here from the valley in Maine. So just uh, good calls and a sniper. That's important. Also the gun mini. That's a deterrent for a lot of people. Um, if you are capping, one thing you can do is kind of come back here crouch. Pyro is really valuable for capping. You can air blast off left and right as you cap. Once you get the point, if the numbers are pretty even, then you can run. Get out of here. Get your heels, wherever the dispenser is, and then get ready to re-engage. As demo, if I'm going to cap, I will sometimes put a bead of stickies here and here, I'll hunker down here. Hopefully the meds up, he can hit me with an arrow or whoever the capper is. Um, and if they try passing this line right here, then I can debt and hopefully get them. Uh, and so sometimes I can cap that way. Uh, keep in mind, this isn't all about DM. It's really important that we keep time on that clock moving. So even if you're going to die, you're going to cap, sometimes it's a worth, worthy death to keep the clock counting down on, in our favor there too. So. Um, that's uh, important. Always keep, we need to keep that clock running in our favor is the number one goal, basically. And then we do DM after that. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Scout, um, if the flank is clear and there's not a whole lot going on and you guys are owning it, feel free to rotate periodically and come on over with the med. Maybe we can do a little work with the combo over here. And just uh, if, if they start coming back, up to the stairs here or over to the uh, connector here, whatever we need you to re-engage in. This will be your primary area still. Same with the soldier. That will be your primary area there. You might want to do work out baiting tactics with the soldier uh, and scout. So maybe have the soldier up there, scout, see if you can lure him in, uh, etc. Spy, you'll also see, by the way, around this, around this crate here, you'll see minis on top of this crate as well. So just call it if you see it. Okay, NG, then once you get the, the uh, mini 
working and you're out here, just you want to play a little bit behind the soldier and the scout because you're more vulnerable to them, more likely to die. You don't have quite the same power as they do for the fighting. Um, but if if our combo, I'm sorry, if our flank is owning and doing really good and they're up forward, you feel free to come up right behind them and help help pick 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 at whatever their targets are. And sometimes you can get a kill that way if the soldier just did 130 damage and you need one shot to take him down. And boom, we get a pick, and uh, that, that certainly helps. Um, okay, and then the, the sniper. So uh, wherever you think, uh, cliff, China, you know, the good sniper spots. So you're going to work solo for the most part. If you keep dying uh, to the spy, then you want, probably want to go razor back. If that's not working, you don't feel comfortable, then you can play with the combo. Um, so I've seen uh, snipers do that before. So the only problem is we're more huddled up, more vulnerable to crits in one big circle, um, but some spies can be really good and a pain in the rear too, so I get that. So you might want to be closer to the pyro if that's a big problem. Uh, I'll have to see how the razor's back. razor back works for you too as well. And spy, um, you want to focus again the carry players that we've identified and then uh, work the cliff a lot. Um, you know, a lot of them you see down around there too. are hiding back in here, waiting for somebody to come out, come up behind them. Uh, and then be ready to drop down on somebody wait for the opportune moment and see if you can get a med pick. Um, so yeah, uh, do your own thing there, but uh, you kind of know the drill there. And uh, we need you to make good intel calls too as to where the medic is. Um, that's pretty important. Medic, you're going to be responsible for knowing advantages, uh, what our percent is, what their percent is. And spy, if you could tell us what they're running, like uh, crits or uber. Etc. Vax, um, go ahead and call it. Um, and uh, heavy, you're going to be anti-aircraft. And if you're on a dispenser, just keep holding it down. Just keep firing the whole time. Noisy, but I mean, you can be spy checking, and and uh, you need to spy check a lot. Help our pyro out, especially if our pyro's down. You know, every you know five seconds, wheel back, take a few shots. Um, but if you're, you're at the dispenser, just hold it down. Just keep firing the whole time. And you'd be amazed what but, uh, you can do sometimes with spy picks or jumpers. If you're already firing, you don't have to have the gun rev up. Um, so you're a lot, that much faster if you get a bomber coming in at you. And then uh, for demo, I'll be doing a lot of spam work. Now I taught my, my goal is if I keep hitting them, taking away health, they're not going to push in. They'll sit here, heal me, heal me, heal me. And I'll keep spamming, spamming, trying to get the best angle I can. Uh, and if I take some hits, and I'll be looking for an arrow from our medic. I'll keep probably working a pocket at an angle as best I can. And uh, that keeps them at bay. If I can just keep doing a lot of damage, um, then they don't want to push until they're all full health, basically. So that certainly helps. Pyro, a lot of little buffs, uh, puffs around the fire, looking for that spy, trying to illuminate them. Check up in here. You know, check around the house. Watch our telly. If you have home wrecker, you keep our telly alive. Um, Check back in the little corners, crevices, wheel around, check around here for the spy hiding. Uh, sometimes they just sit sit out here and, and hide in the corners and just get intel is what we're doing. So it depends on your spy, if he's an intel spy, a combination, or if he just goes for, for picks. But uh, most spies are somewhere in between. They give intel, but then they go for picks too. Um, okay, so that is what I have for the general stuff. Now I'm going to get into the... Uh, different mini guns. So Uber, traditional. Most teams run Uber. They may run a crits or two, trying to change it up, and then go back to Uber. If we do Uber, uh, the game is we have to try to kill their med or get them to force. Uh, we want to have an advantage on them. So if they do come to the point, we can use block the point with the Uber. That's the other thing that I see is sometimes if I say block the point with the Uber, don't go in too late because then they cap and then we're on the point. Use it just before they cap, and then and, and uh, make sure that you maybe use a second or two early if we're going to do that, and use it to block the point. That way we stop the clock. Again, it's important that we keep that clock running on our behalf. Um, and then uh, uh, spy, maybe you can tell us what the uh, Uber advantage is too, if if our medic is not aware of the Uber advantage. But that's up to our med to to track it when their med dies, and when we both have, etc. For even if we may have to get risky if they have the point. We may have to push in or wait for a pick or two and then ingress so we have a numerical advantage. Um, the goal is with Uber, you try to get them to use first, then you have a better Uber and you can stay in the point a little bit longer. That's really important. So try to 
hang on to it as long as you can, kite not using it, and then boom, use it after they've used it, and then we go in. Sometimes if the clock is getting low, we're at a disadvantage, we have to play very aggressive and aggro and really get in their face and do what we can. Um, so those are just situational uh, developments and things to monitor uh, and just keep our eye on that, uh, listen to the main caller. If the main caller says push, unless you're at 10 or 15 health and you're super low, then go, at half health, just go ahead and go in. That might not be the right decision, but it's some decision. So it's just a batting average and uh, just follow what the main caller says. If you're, gonna, if you're going to bomb, again, give us a war warning so we can follow up and go in because that's a distract, big distraction and we can sometimes get a lot of damage done. Just don't go, okay, bombing now and we don't have time to react. So give it a countdown uh, and ask if we're ready. So, okay, so uh, that is about it for the Uber. Um, pretty traditional, pretty standard play. I think all of us have played in that scenario and getting them to try to use first and then follow up, block point with it. Uh, next one is crits. Okay, crits is, uh, we're going to have crits first before they get Uber, and I need very good intel from everybody, exact position of the medic. So if he's in the pocket, you can say, okay, medic's in the pocket. Medic is behind the cliff. Medic is behind the house. Medic is at the bottom of the cliff ramp. Medic is, okay, middle of the cliff ramp behind the fence. Medic is forward on the cliff behind the rocks, um, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to be firing blindly, and the first one, if they have an Uber, I need to try to kill their med as best as I can. Am I going to hit them every time? Absolutely not. If they have, then they're going to use as soon as I crits, and they're going to come into us, and that's going to thwart our Uber. So it's important that I try to kill a med on our ingress, or if we can kill a lot of the players, they'll Uber in, it'll fade, and then they're kind of screwed because now they have just two people in the point or three people in the point, and maybe we have five or six, and they're going to die anyway. So... If they're smart, they probably wouldn't want to push in with Uber if they lose a lot. But a lot of teams still do. So if, if we do a crits, um, I need everybody coming with me. And the way it's going to be called is Sam is going to go 80%. Okay, and I'll be saying, where's the med? Where's the med? If it's quiet, no one has eyes on them. If someone says, med is, med is uh, at the front of the cliff behind the rock. Okay, then, okay, everybody get ready. No one die. And then as soon as we're saying, okay, get ready, three, two, one, it's that one called 90, then three, two, one, use. Okay, now I'm going to fire off. I need everybody coming in at that point going for picks. And if I go down, sometimes a sniper will nail me right in the head, which seems to happen about one out of four pushes of crits. Then the heavy will pick up and just keep firing, taking advantage of it. Our soldiers should be jumping into the fray. Uh, they should be let damage, assuming I'm getting the stickies out, or the heavy is doing some damage. Our scout should be going for picks, shooting people in the back as they're running, etc. Once the crits is faded, okay, uh, if we've killed a lot of them, continue on, clean up. If we didn't do too good, we only got a couple in the crits, we lost a couple, then get out of dodge because they're probably going to Uber back in. If they do Uber back in and run out, wait for it to fade, and then we can re-engage, assuming we have even numbers or close to, close to the numbers. If we don't, then don't re-engage, and they're going to get the point. So crits. Uh, every, everybody else's position is all the same like we talked about. I just need good intel uh, as demo. Um, and just three, two, one. And then medic, you're not going to use until I say use. Do not use early. You're going to use right when I say use. So I'm calling that. If I go down and who's ever behind pushing in will pick up the crits and roll with it. And uh, that's crits. But getting the exact medic location, again, over here, that's, that's the most paramount part of it all and using it as soon as we get it. We don't want to hang on to it. Now, if net is dead and they have a big clump of people, we still may go ahead and use it. Uh, and if we can kill a whole bunch of them, then that's well worth it. It takes them quite a while to regroup. If they're on this side here, you could say they're in the, on the grass. You could say, hey, he's behind the wall there at the grass. Uh, he's far grass. Medic is at the pack in the grass. Medic's far valley. Medic's close valley. Medic's behind house on stairs, etc. So. The spy, the scout, and the soldier, you three are going to be the most vital for getting us where the med location is. Okay, last one is vaccinator. Now, this is new, and a lot of people do not know how to count in the vaccinator properly. So, we may use the vaccinator and test it out. And uh, if it's working good in the scrim, 
then this may be our number one go-to Uber or our, our, uh, medic gun. So same thing, we're going to come out of here. I, as demo, I will be building using half the touchy, the toy toy, or however you pronounce the thing. Um, and uh, I'll be coming out through main. I won't be jumping and as aggressive, so we won't have our traditional medic, uh, I'm sorry, demo battle here. Our scout, you should take out any stickies that'll probably be here because we're not having our demo war. And uh, um, and then you, get, you can go over to back to the flank. Uh, and then the medic and I will continue to build. We'll come over here. And then we need to know where the medic is. Then I need medic intel. Okay, where's the med? Where's the med? And pretty soon, then we're going to say, okay, get ready. Three, two, one. Our medic will set it on bullets or explosives or fire. Um, ideally, we can get the pyro, keep the pyro down. Because that's just what, that makes Sam's job a lot easier. One less thing he has to worry about, toggling. Um, if we get two explosive classes, then Sam will probably toggle over to a bullet class uh, and, and defend me against that. So as demo, I'll roll in here. I'll be impervious to bullets. Should be able to get their heavy and scout without worrying. And if their soldier and demo happen to be down, that's great. Then he doesn't have to worry too much about toggling it to explosives. Or vice versa. If we get their heavy and scout, uh, uh, and then they just have an NG or whatever, then he'll probably go explosives. So Sam, or our medic, He's going to be kind of leading the charges here. He will be telling us what to focus. So if he knows that he's on bullets, he'll say, focus the heavy. So as the demo's pushing in, OK, I'll focus the heavy. And it's right there. So Sam should be able to, or a medic, should be able to ascertain what the most likely threat is based on how he has the vaccinator set. Um, that being said, as we are pushing in, we need our other classes to come in. If Sam says, focus the heavy, then our other classes should focus the explosive classes, like the soldier and demo. So that lets us keep that that uh, Uber, the vaccinator, uh, more pertinent and less vulnerable to the uh, classes that Sam doesn't happen to be toggled on, if that makes sense. Um, One thing I'm going to add is uh, the key of the vaccinator is going to be short explosive pushes that hopefully we can take them off guard with because we're able to do it so much because of the fast uber building. I'm hoping we can do it a lot and just take the enemy team off guard with that. And most people always underestimate how good the vaccinator can be with um, the how effective the shields can do at tanking targets. But obviously it's going to get easily overwhelmed. So my hope of the vaccinator is... They keep winning the fights so we can win the war. Because if we always, you know, every time we push in, if we get like three of them for every push, that's really good. Because now, now it's a 6v9 and we have the vaccinator. And, you know, if they try to push into us, it's going to be very hard for them to do that. As, you know, it's easier for me to see who's coming when they're pushing versus me uh, pushing. And then it's they could be hiding, you know, in a nook or a corner that I couldn't see. So that's uh that's one of the things that you know we're gonna have to try to do when we're making these explosive pushes. Yep, and that's a big advantage is being able to get it. And uh, one of the questions I had for you, uh, Sam, is uh, if we wait for a little bit longer, then can we have three backs ready to go before they would even have crit? Oh yes, easily. Like okay. The the. the if we were going to build all four Ubers, it takes 23 seconds to get all three. Sorry, all four Ubers. Me just okay. constantly killing someone that's below full health. You and can how long does it take to get crits? It takes, um, if the crits is building at the maximum speed, it's going to take 36 seconds. And okay. Uber's so, 40. Okay. So, oh wait, okay. So, if, so if we get a 27, we want to... Sorry, Go ahead. sorry, it's uh, 32. I, yeah, it was 8 seconds less than stock, and stock's always 40. So, okay, so what we want to do is maybe get it to 4 and then just push right in. Yeah, we can get it to 4. Because like, if, you're, if you're constantly you know, keeping yourself around 120 health while I'm building on you with the half Satoichi, then that makes it a lot easier for, for you know, it, obviously I'm going to be building at the max rate and we're going to get the shields really fast. And also if we're, if we're you know, const if they're constantly doing trash damage to our teammates, you don't even need to uh, use a Satoichi. I can just keep healing the trash damage that they've been doing on our teammates and keep building that way. And heck, it doesn't, and I can even still build Ubers while we're even pushing. So oftentimes, if I already have four Ubers and I pop one a little bit sooner, uh, if, if, if they're doing lots of damage to you, I can often get basically five Ubers or even sometimes six Ubers in a push. 
because okay, it now, so dang fast. Yeah, what about pushing, like, if we have about three and a half ready to go, and we have four by the time we get here, is that correct? Yeah. So we'll do that. About three and a half, we'll start pushing in. Maybe it's like 24 seconds or 23 seconds, and we'll start pushing in. Uh, if we can get the pyro, sniper, spy, I know spy not likely, uh, but sniper, if you can maybe get the pyro, uh, that's a big bonus uh, uh, before we roll in because that's just one less thing that Sam has to worry about, and we can see where the closest threats are. Okay, so I will be running half the Toichi. What other classes need to run anything different? What about the basher for scout? Um... Basher, uh, if our scout's running the basher sweep, but most of the time I feel like the scout's going to be with the flank, so oftentimes he's probably not going to be sticking close to me in right. front of any other class. So I feel like running basher and scout's kind of pointless. Anything that helps right. scout with DM is probably going to be more important, or maybe mobility, if the scout thinks that mobility is going to help him a lot, so maybe atomizer, okay, so he could keep him, Yeah, winger or whatever, too. Okay. Uh, any other classes? Uh, soldier Whip, of course, to get oh, us out there fast. Oh. Yes. Put, you know, once again, it's all about the explosive pushes. So, you know, him whipping us in, is, if he has a time for that or if he's alive, that's going to be really good. And then before he, you know, bombs in, I can always give him a shield if, if he asks for one. If it's going to be a while before we push in, he may be wanting to also whip that scout pretty fast so the scout can get to the flank real quick and then also go for a demo pick. Uh, Especially on the other two, crits and, and Uber. Yeah, because if they're the only the only thing the only time that Merrick's going to be important on, on the enemy team is if they're running um, Uber because Uber's always going to beat a Vax just because pure invincibility and spearheading a push with you know someone that's purely invincible you can only just slow it down with the Vax and you're never going to beat them because they're always going to have a lot of time just to do a lot of damage to you. Okay, what other? Uh... Comments do you have for vaccinator before um, we wrap this up? Sniper, I mean, if our sniper needs a, you know, if our sniper's trying to fight the other sniper, don't be afraid to come to me and ask me for a shield because I will, I can give it to you, um, you won. If we get the enemy sniper down, it's going to be much easier for us to push. So, I, I, if, if the sniper needs a shield, I'm fine with giving him a shield if he wants a, you know, I give him a shield, then he jumps out there and basically can take the sniper. Uh, uh, the sniper v sniper, and without having to worry about him dying, because it does last for 2.5 seconds, even if I die, or if I, you know, go, to, you know, s heal someone else. So that's a nice thing about that. So don't be afraid to ask for shield sniper if you think you need help, because just remember, uh, once I give you that shield, you're you're immune to, you know, critical damage, and you take a lot of less damage from bullets. So even if you're like at 50 health, you can take that fight with the enemy sniper. And not have to, and you can easily come out on top during that time. Just make sure that you, you know, it might. I don't know. You'll have to experiment with that. But depending on when I give it to you, you might be able to take two shots and then run behind cover, or depending on how far cover is away, you might be able to, you know, take one and then run to cover, and the sniper can't punish you because a shield will last that long. But you I, know, subject. Oh, go ahead. It, and it depends. Like if depending on what the medic's at, it might it, we, it might determine. Um, what we do, if the medic's probably closer to the Uber and we don't think we can get him because the medic's not you know, playing pretty passively, then it might be better just to give a, you know, try to get the, you know, as many of them down as as we can, and then start playing passively. Because if they if if they have to push in really far to get us, then we can easily punish them uh, when they're trying to get out. So that might. On a side point. note, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I wasn't gonna say anything important. There. Okay, on the side note too, where I'm standing here is a great heavy spot. Uh, one of the teams we played, their heavy was just owning this right here, and you can crouch. And, and he's pretty liberal firing, uh, and then you can crouch and then pop up. So heavy on this little fence here moving around is really good. Um, and you might have to come over here and make periodic trips to get more ammo. And get back up on there. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sam. Anything else? Um, not that I can think of. I mean, the the biggest thing is I'm just hoping, our, you know, once again, our, our DM is going to need to be pretty good to make this strategy work, and we're going to have to be playing in a very particular way, of course, you know, 
once we, once we start pushing, everyone need we need the entire team to start pushing and making noise. And hopefully that if when we're doing that too, uh, it opens up an opportunity for a spy to get maybe some good stabs too. Because if we're pushing with the vaccinator, they're gonna be focused on us. And I and they might and good teams are probably gonna call focus fires on you know me particularly. So that should open up a good opportunity for a spy. They um. They make a stab because the pyro is probably going to be focused on us if they know that pyro. If if teams know about pyro as being a pretty good bane to vaccinator medics, but I don't think most people know that, especially in IM. Most I don't even think most pro players, like you know, like top of the top, know about you know the spe the specifics between you know how pyro's afterburn works with vaccinator and whatnot. So. Okay, and then. Again, if you're pushing in to defend and we're using, keep in mind what we're focusing. So think think yourself, are we focusing a bullet class? So if you're a scout and a soldier and you're rolling in, then you go for explosive classes, uh, trying to keep them at bay to keep Sam alive. So if we're going for explosive class, like if Sam says, we're fo focus a soldier or focus a demo, then you guys go for the bullet classes. Because I, what I might do is if they have like, you know, let's say an engineer and a scout and then there's a soldier within the pocket, I might pop bullet. And, and, um, so that, you know, you can easily kill the, you know, you would have to kill the soldier fast, but if you do, then all of a sudden you have that shield to help you take that fight, because there's going to be more, uh, bullet damage and explosive, and then that's what I'm hoping that you, t you know, we take out the soldier quickly, and then hopefully you'll take enough damage from the soldier and the other two that I can keep getting Ubers and give you another bullet shield by the time the one expires. So... I'm probably going to be calling the focus whoever I can't shield. And also be careful about heavies and sentry guns as they can do a lot of damage even through my shield. If they're in, in their basically their golden range. Same with uh, possibly demos too. Because it just to you know, remind people, when I do give you uh, a shield, you only take 25 damage uh, from each demo pipe. But... Obviously, if other people are shooting with him and you're, we're all getting focus fired, it's it, they can still sh kill you for the shield if we're not careful. What's a golden range? Uh, for heavy, up yeah. close because he, uh, heavy's. Up close, close. I mean, the yeah. Distance is. Do you have a distance? I would say about like from from like either side of the rock to each other. If, if the heavy's good with tracking, okay. then it's gonna be e all right. easily shred you. Okay. If so about the careful. point square. I can slow him down, but if if there's someone else there with the heavy, then you gotta be very careful, especially if it's another damage type. So just be careful about heavies. The nice thing about heavy though is you can easily surf away his bullets no matter what class you are. Just remember the jump and then crouch, and then you can fly away from like a like a fan. Like a pair pair plane with a fan. It's uh not the hardest thing to do that, but if the heavy's from across the map, then you don't need to worry about the heavy. He's going to be doing like what free damage a, a second with the spread. But heavies with the stock minigun, if I remember correctly, their maximum DPS if all of their bullets land is 540 damage a second. And even with the vaccine, you're cutting down the damage by 75%. That's still a lot of damage. That's like still, I think, like over 100 damage a second that he's going to be doing to you. If if you're you know basically kissing the heavy and you're in melee range with him, so just be careful about that. If you're gonna be that close up to the heavy, uh, we're probably gonna want to focus heavy as even if you know there's someone else there, you know, he's gonna be by far the biggest threat. So focus on you know anything that's gonna be do what you think's gonna be doing the most damage to you. If I'm not saying anything, the focus. But yeah, defensive classes like that, you know, level 3 sentry guns, which are probably not going to be running since this is cough, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, heavies can, like I said before, can easily out-damage you for the shields. Pyros, for those who don't know, they reduce the shields effect, uh, after burn, reduce the shields effectiveness by 20%, and same with the critical immunity, so if you're on fire... Um, and just in case we have to go against a vaccine or ourselves because they want to try to copy us, sniper. If you see a uh, vax medic on fire, even if you pop the bullet shield, and you know you pop one. Still go for headshots because they will. You will get 20% of the crit damage, which for those I'm not going to go too much into it. But basically, it's gonna you're gonna instead of doing triple damage with crits, you're gonna be basically doing double uh, of what you would do for the shield. So 
going for headshots when you see someone on fire matters. And if we're running crits against the Vax or Medic, if they're running crits, obviously shutting down their pyre is going to be pretty important. Uh, yeah. So if the pyre is okay. the biggest, probably the biggest target outside of op so I would say focus targets like this. Probably the biggest one the focus would be the medic, because obviously if he's running stock, Uber is going to be the big biggest. Sniper is another really good one. I, a sniper charging up his um. Sniper rifle, even if I have a 10% bullet on, can easily, you know, if he charges up a little bit, he's gonna one shot me without me. Bane will have time to react if the sniper is good. So, a good sniper is also another really big threat. A good pyro is something we're gonna wanna focus because not only can they push us away and easily stop our explosive pushes and end it really shortly, but then also you have the problem of him making our shields less effective. A heavy uh, in demo is going to be, you know, big damage dealers that can do a lot of damage through the Vax shields if um, in the right position. Um, soldiers, scouts, engineers, you know, everyone else is not too important as they by themselves they can't really deal enough damage through the Vax center that you have to worry about it. Because soldiers, obviously, they, they can only do as much as the rocket launcher allows them to do, and same with scouts. You, you know, if even if they're in the meat shot range, they're only going to be doing like 100 damage. Or sorry, 25 do damage instead of 100 if I pop a bubble. And that's if now, the scout's yeah. aiming good. Now, what, I, I will amend that, though. I will say that pay close attention to the f people that we have as focus classes because these are top fraggers. So the rest should be easy to kill, even if it's a pyro, he's not a top fragger, etc. Um, but uh, in this... This upcoming match, uh, I have listed the top three, and those are really going to be the number one focus people because I don't think their sniper's that great, their pyro's not that great. They're not going to be a big threat. We should be able to kill them easy anyway, That's but true. their scout, spy, and demo are going to be the top three that are the most skilled players. So if we keep them down, we should easily be out, be able to out-DM them regardless what medigun we have. So then that's what that's what I'll probably pop in for so we can get those picks because obviously the scout demo are going to be up front with the rest of their team. So that will make, make it much easier to go for them. So if I'm knowing that we need to focus them, I'll pop explosion and hopefully we can have, you know, you know, or scout either. You know, if, if, if we're talking about the scout on the flank, I can pop, you know, bullet and our scout can easily go in and take a, a 1v1 of the enemy scout and so on and so forth. Yeah, if their scouts aren't working the flank a lot, it might be best just to go into the explosives because then that counters the demo and just watch for the spy pushing exactly. in as a start. But that's that'd probably be against this particular team we're playing. But that being said, always look at the uh, the focus players and who we're playing and what the top three are because that's if you get them down, our team has really good DM overall, and we should be able to, to own the rest of them. Exactly, and, I'm, I'm, and that's what I'm hoping with. Just with our explosive pushes, we can keep, you know, suppressing their top players and just win by making them play extremely passively while they're trying to build their Uber. And if, they, if they're forced to play extremely passively while they're building their Ubers, like, near spawn, then that's just free time for us. Okay, we need to wrap this up because we're getting lengthy here. Is there anything else, Sam, that's important that, that's noteworthy to add? About um... Not that I can think of. Um... Okay. Well, thank you for coming all, and we'll go ahead and end, oh, end this. So. One thing, the last thing I was going to say, you know, I forgot to mention this, but maybe for our loadout, depends on how explosive our pushes are, but if, if we're making really explosive pushes and that seems to be working, uh, then we could actually probably run uh, jetpack on Pyro and see, you know, have him bomb in just like a soldier almost because I can shield him and then when he's switching off the jetpack and vulnerable, the shield will still be there and then he doesn't have to worry about that. And so he, now he's basically in the scouts, you know, whoever I, he's bombing's face and then, you know, he'll be able to win that fight easily since he gets a damage lead. And what we can do, we, we will test that in the scrim and just see how it goes. Other than that, I, I can't think of anything else like for people's loads to run. Just, once again, it's all about hopefully our team learning how to play with the vaccinator because I it might be something we might, even if it fails, and we might want to try in the future just to see how it still works because I, I don't think 
I, especially since we're going to have minimal practice with it, since we're just going to be scrimming the day before the actual event, I feel like that's something we could probably try in the future to see if it would work. Because obviously, I, I'm, you know, just having little time to test this and having people try to adjust to a wildly different playing style because the vaccinator is widely different from the stock medic. What, what we'll do is in the match, if we, if we, the first round, if we use vax uh, the whole time, and if we lose the round, then we'll probably switch to crits. Um, or Uber, um, or if we lose crits, you know, and then we maybe we switch to Uber or Vax. Um, but uh, if we go Vax first and it doesn't work out for whatever reason, that's okay, no harm, no foul, and we'll switch over to crits, which we're generally quite good at. Uh, and that's a lot of it is the demo and medic gelling together, and uh, somebody ready to pick it up if the demo goes down. Uh, but we, as a team, we seem to be good at that. Go ahead. Yeah, because I'm worried with our previous Vax pushes, our team hasn't usually pushed behind us when we've been calling that and been typically kind of slow. So I'm worried that maybe our team will have that same mindset of wanting to play a little bit more passively when we're running Vax. And so we're calling a push, having people behind us to get ready to you know take up the other person in case they die or they're having trouble and they need to fall back because they're getting low on health. Uh, cause I, I can then give them the shield and, you know, try to keep healing the person that's low, um, and try to get them back into the fight while the shielded person is, you know, going to be A-OK -okay without me helping them. And if we're running Vax, try to be a little bit more passive at the mid and try not to die, cause we want to make our push, we want everybody to be coming in that we you can have. So it might be 9v9 at that point, but maybe we'll get lucky, we'll get a pick, maybe they'll get a pick. But we're going to use it really quick, so try not to die quick, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, I think that's that's it. So thank you, Sam. I appreciate it. Yeah. Actually, I just literally thought of this, but if, if they're starting to play really passively because they're afraid of the vaccinator, then I'm probably going to be sticking with the sniper just so he can win the sniper v sniper. And then he can also maybe get, you know, their, you know, their medic or any key picks while they're playing passively because they might accidentally peek out for a slight yeah, time. It's a good idea. Yep. And then just do bullets on him so they're for the counter snipe not a Yeah, and I'll and I'll probably pop whatever I think is necessary. If the if there's a lot of grenades coming his way, I might I'm gonna obviously pop explosive and make sure he doesn't die from, you know, getting you know, two pipe from across the map. And just be vocal about our pushes who you're going to who you want us to focus. And then I will focus those classes on our and then that means our flank and whoever else is supporting, it's not Uber, it focuses the other class that's either explosive or bullets. Or Pyro, number one. Yeah. Pyro may run. If he takes a lot of damage, he may just get out of dodge. If he's not in factor, then just start focusing whatever Sam is not set to. That or you might try the Kamikaze, potentially. And try to keep pushing us away and just slowing us down. Either way, no matter what the pirate does, he's always going to be a big problem. If they know how the, if he knows how to position himself right. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. All right, I think that's it. So thank you all. Exactly. And I'm ending the recording now.